Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Asyadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la syarika lah Wa asyadu anna Muhammad dan abdu wa rasul Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una Wa fa'na lima atlantana Wa zidna ilma Allahumma aslih lana sya'lana kullah Wa la zakilna ila nafusina wa fa'na'in Amma ba'ad Alhamdulillah Uh, InsyaAllah tonight will be uh, last lesson before we will stop for uh, some time We will be soon insyaAllah approximately uh, next year insyaAllah Next month okay, Now uh, in our previous lesson We were still in the midst of uh, in the chapter of Fadl al-Fikr Fadl al um, The virtue of uh, al-Fikr Like you mentioned al-Fikr is actually a jama Like you just mentioned like this So it's actually the meaning of it, it's actually the virtue of remembering Allah, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in general. And the author, um, Sheikh Sa'id bin Wa'af al-Qahqani, rahimahullah, he mentions a couple of verses of the, from the Qur'an and a couple of hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, and we have explained that these verses um, and a hadith, um, they are related to different categories of uh, of virtue in terms of whether it's a, it's a virtue of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the nature of uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the uh, them or basically warning to not uh, be neglectful from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the different uh, forms of dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well um, and one of the greatest forms is uh, the uh, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself Uh, the Book of Allah Al Al Quran. We mentioned in detail uh, about this in our previous lesson. So we stopped at this. Uh, uh, we stopped at this point. Okay, so the next hadith that we will be going through. He said, "Allah, he said, Allah, Alaihi Wasallam, man qada ma qada lam yadurillah fihi." He who shall ever sit. So this one is uh, individual. It's not in the group. Individual sits. Ma uh, qada lam yadurillah fihi. Sits down in an area, in a place, and he does not mention Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Does not remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at that moment. Then at Aliyyu min Allahi tiratan, he will find the cause of uh, will will gain tirat from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Gain tirat from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And tirat basically means naqsun wa tabi'atun wa hasratun. He basically means decrease. Uh, Nadamah, regret okay. uh, Basically it's a negative thing It's not a good thing, it's a negative thing And whosoever uh, Lies down to sleep It does not mention the name of Allah Before rising The same thing He will gain tirah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which means naqsun wa tabi'atun wa hasra okay, so this is basically the type of nas or text of, uh, of, of of the religion specifically sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which mentions the harm or the loss of, a, of the one who does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does not remember himself and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned this is one of the categories of how the musus the text of the, the religion calls or um, encourages with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay? so in this one man qa'ada ma qa'adan lamad kulillah fi kanat so basically um, in uh, in gatherings or if a person sits down in a place and does not mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala What he will be mentioning is basically a level of life. It's either uh, it's either things uh, it's basically things which will uh, lead him to or distract him from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Lahu, lahu basically means things which are distractions, things which are not bringing benefit. Lahafla, uh, leading to neglect of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that is why it becomes uh, an adama. It becomes a source of regret. For the person on the day of judgment, 
quantity for a person on the day of, of judgment. And this hadith is narrated by Abu Hurairah and the next hadith, وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم ما جلس قوم المجلس لن يذكروا الله فيه and this is in plural, plural form so uh, either individual or plural ولن يصلوا على نبيهم إلا كان عليه ابتراء and ولن يصلوا على نبيهم إلا كان عليه ابتراء okay, so and they do not uh, send uh, prayers to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prayers to the Prophet means uh, uh, it's usually translated peace and blessings to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم but as salah to the Prophet means that you are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the meaning of salah to ala nabiyyim. Illa kana alayhi tiratan. The same thing is the source of regret, the source of decrease, the source of loss. Fa in sha'a adhabahum wa in sha'a zahrabahum. Now, if Allah wills, Allah will um, punish them. And if He wills, He will forgive them. Which means that they are under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not promised. Salvation, they are not promised uh, great rewards, they are not promised forgiveness, rather it's uh, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Allah may forgive, Allah may not, we don't know. Okay? Um, and the next one over here, وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا مِنْ قَوْمٍ يَقُومُونَ مِنْ مَجْلِسِ So the two previous ahadith is about the majlis itself. He's sitting in a majlis, being in a, in, a, in, a, in a group of discussion, for example, or being by yourself and being um, basically occupied with something. Now, the last hadith uh, before the next chapter, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا مِنْ يَقُومُونَ مِنْ مَجْلِسِ No group leaves from a gathering. لا يذكرون الله فيه إلا قاموا عن مثل جيفة حمار وكان لهم حسر There is no people who will rise from an assembly. So the previous ones are specific to what is inside the assembly and this hadith is specific to what comes after that, which means even when you leave, it's also uh, a loss and it's also great, uh, brings harm to you. In la yakuruna qafi illa qamu Except that they, um, uh, no people will rise from an assembly in which they have failed to mention the name of Allah without it being as if they were getting off a dead donkey's rotting back and it will be a cause of grief for them. Okay? What it means here is um, the rotting back over is referring to the loss, referring to the um, the bad effect of this uh, this majalis, these gatherings, which are not filled with remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And that is what, why you find actually in many ahadith, uh, in many texts of the religion, the Prophet ﷺ mentions about the virtue of majalis, majalis al-dhikr, the gatherings of, of al-dhikr. Um, and the previous or the pious predecessors, they would give great concern to these majalis al-dhikr. Abdullah bin Rawaha, for example, radiallahu anh, يَأْخُذُ بِيَدِ النَّفَرِ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ فَيَقُولُ He would take uh, the hands of some of his companions and he would say ta'alaw nu'min sa'a come let's believe in Allah for a moment ta'alaw fal nadkurillah come let's go and uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nazdadu imana bi ta'ala and therefore increase our faith in obedience to uh, with obedience to him la'allahu yadkuruna bi ma'ufirati in hopes that Allah he will remember us by Forgive by by uh, forgiving us okay? by giving us by bestowing us forgiveness. Imam Turabi. Umar bin Habib al Khatmi radiallahu anhu used to say al Iman yazid wa yankus. Faith increases and decreases. Taqila. So he was said to him, Maziyalatu wa nuksan. What is the cause of its decrease and decrease? Qala ida dakar na Allah azza wa jal wa hamidna wa sabbahna. Now if we remember Allah azza wa jal, say wa hamidna and we praise Him and we uh, make tasbih to him. Tasbih basically means free him from infections. That is the cause of the increase in faith. Now if we are in neglect, and basically we forget everything, and that is the cause of, of decrease. Now the Prophet even describes Matthias Zikr as the uh, gardens of paradise in, in the dunya, in the holy life. You can find this hadith, for example, in a narrative by Tirmidhi, 
عن انس بن مالك رضي الله عنه ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اذا قال اذا مررتم برياض الجنه فارتعوا if you are passing by uh, uh, the gardens of paradise then فارتعوا uh, basically means um, entering and, 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 and be happy in it فارتعوا قال وما رياض الجنه and they ask what is the gardens of paradise قال الى فرتعوا He, he mentions Hilat al-Dikr, the circles of al-Dikr. And the circles of al-Dikr, um, he, as explained in other sources, Hilat al-Dikr or uh, circles of al-Dikr is not just restricted to circles in which you make tasbih and tahmeed and takbir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example. Uh, rather, it also includes, especially, um, Circles in which the halal and the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been mentioned. How do you pray? Is this the way to, to pray? How do you make uh, nikah? How do you get married? How do you get divorce? What is the ruling on divorce, for example? Yeah, and how do you do it? And all of these are um, included in the category of majalis al dhikr Rather, these can be the more higher form of majalis al dhikr because it increases the servant in knowledge and it especially increases the servants in the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With, with knowledge, you increase your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and therefore, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah mentions man sha'a an yaskuna riyad wa jannah fi dunya. Whosoever wants a taste or wants to stay in, a, in the gardens of paradise in the holy life. Fal yastawtin majalis al Therefore, stay in this majalis al dhikr fa inna hariyad al jannah. For indeed, they are the gardens of paradise. And they are also the gardens, or sorry, the gatherings of the, the angels as well. That's how it's mentioned in a couple of hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for example, in much more uh, short hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions لا يقوم بقوم يذكرون الله عز وجل لهفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة ونزلتهم ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله في من عنده. Now in another hadith, لا لا ما جلس قوم في بيت من بيوت الله. It's another narration of the same hadith. So this same hadith in the narration is specifically mentions about sitting in a gathering of a dhikr in a masjid, in a house from the houses of Allah. There's another hadith which is uh, which does not mention this restriction or this uh, specifically in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam al nawawi mentions that it also includes other gatherings of knowledge which are outside the uh, houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Eh, such as in schools, for example, in madrasa, eh, in, in gatherings in which people just randomly have gatherings and then remind themselves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels will gather around them, rashiyatum or rahmat, the source of Uh, mercy, source of a sakina, a sakina will descend to them, tranquility, and Allah will mention them amongst those who are with him. Now, one of the, uh, and this is to me one of the, the uh, great benefits that the Majalis al brings to the servant is actually, most importantly, Hayf al-Lisan. Because the protection of the tongue of the of the believer. Because if he does he is not in a majlis dhikr, he will be in a majlis of ghafla. And this majlis of ghafla, neglect to, uh, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will usually include uh, lahu, for example, distractions, uh, empty talk, for example. Now if it's not empty talk, it's gonna be something worse than that, such as for example al ghiba and manima, like biting, okay, talking about others. Uh, and all of these would lead to the uh, lying, for example, the Kalib, lies, falsehood about it, things which are not true, the furnish, uh, immoral speech, immoral speech. So if he does not involve himself in a thing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will definitely involve himself in all these other types of, of speech. Okay? And therefore, if he, he, he sits in Majlis Siddiqat, it is from the greatest reasons for his tongue to be protected. Okay, for his tongue to be protected from all these sorts of lowly 
speech. Okay? Because the servant has been created with a tongue, and his tongue is definitely used to speak. It is not used for any other thing, a- anything else. Okay? It's, it's created for him to speak. So if he does not speak with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not speak with, uh, about the commands of Allah, okay? he does not speak about goodness and benefit, he will definitely, and it is a must that he speaks about things which are haram, or some of it. Okay? So a person who uh, makes it a habit, to uh, uh, mix a habit that his tongue always remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will protect his tongue from, from falsehood, uh, lahu, and whosoever's tongue is dry from the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will start talking with all sorts of bargain, falsehood, and all sorts of immoralities. Okay? So, uh, and therefore, that is the reason why these ahadith are being mentioned. When the servant speaks all of these things, that is why the these gatherings, okay, or it will bring him a cause of sorrow, cause of regret in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because he will bear the burden of all that he speaks, as how it is asked by Mu'ad bin Jabal the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Awa nahnu mu'ahiduna bima yatakalla." Are we going to be taken into account what we speak with our tongues? Okay? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions. Fakulat ka ummuk. It's basically it's an expression which is like a, a shocking expression or means expression. What it means here is that it's it's the truth. Why sh- uh, you should know this? It's something like that. Okay? Everybody will be uh, taken into account what they what they speak, okay? and therefore it's important for the believer to protect his tongue. And that is why you see other hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaking about this this matter. I mean, person is not in Nari, Tarkuma, for example, okay, which is also involves the tongue. Another the hadith, Man Samata Naja, whoever is silent, he will be successful. Okay. And the reason for this is because he will lessen himself from speaking all these falsehood and, and wrong things. Um, and in another hadith, the Prophet mentions, Faliyakul Fayra, Man Kana, Yubin Billah, Waliyam Ta'atul Dad, the sign of a person's faith. In, the, in Allah and the hereafter is that he speaks good or keeps silent. Okay? So there's no third option. It's either you speak good, you keep silent. The third option is speaking about it, speaking falsehood, riba, namima. And these options isn't in the options being presented by the Prophet. Okay, so alhamdulillah, we have reached the end of this uh, first chapter. Okay? And I hope it gives uh, us the determination and encouragement to make the care to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore after that the author begins with the next chapter supplications when you wake up okay, supplications when you wake up al-kar al-istiqadu al-istiqadu or al-istiqadi minan naumi the uh, al-kar is not supplications al-kar are the remembrance of, uh, words of remembrance when a person wakes up from his sleep Al-Istiqal basically means waking up. Al-Istiqal basically means waking up from, from sleep. Okay, and the author, uh, Rahimahullah, mentions a couple of uh, al-kar over here, the first one. Alhamdulillah, illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi an nushur. Alhamdulillah, illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. And this, the dhikr is actually part of uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, which is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari in this Sahih. From the hadith of Hudayfat ibn Yaman, radiallahu anhu, قال, he said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أراد أن ينام. Now when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم wanted to sleep, قال, he said, بسمك اللهم أموت وأحيا. In your name, O Allah, I sleep or I die and I live وأحيا. وإذا استيق الله من منامه, and if he wakes up from his sleep, قال, Alhamdulillah, he would say, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi an-nushur. 
Praise be to Allah Alladhi ahyana Who brings us back to life Ba'dama amatana After causing us To die Wa ilayhi and nushur And to him is our our return um, Yes, okay, so this hadith actually mentions both the du'as of both or the attar of both uh, both uh, times when a person goes to sleep and wakes up. Okay, so uh, when he sleeps, he says, Bismillah, amutu wa ahya. And when he wakes up, okay, he says, uh, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushud. So, point of view is that there is a mention of al maut okay, uh, or death. Um, and there is a reason for this. Yeah, there is a reason, reason for this. Okay? The reason is because uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is referring to sleep as as, as death over here. Okay? And sleep can also be called as wafat. Okay? Wafat. And it's an Arabic word. In many we say wafat. It's also death. Uh, even if life is still existing. In it. Even if life still existed in sleep, is still re- referred to as as wafat or as as not. Okay? And uh, this is mentioned in Surah Zuma, verse number forty-two. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Allah uh, yatawaffa al-anfus, Allah yatawaffa al-anfusa, ila mautiha wa lati lam tamu fi manamina." Allah takes the souls at the time of their death and those that do not die. Allah yatawaffa al-anfusa hina ma'udiha wal-lati lam tamut fi manamiha. And those who do not die, He takes during their sleep. Wal-lati lam tamut fi manamiha. Which means that فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ And then He keeps those for which He has decreed death. وَيُمْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى And He will Release the others for a specified term until the time to to die. What is that called? And that is why uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions when we are talking about the remembrance of the dhikr when a person wakes up. Alhamdulillah, nadi ahyana ba'da ma'amada. Because the sleep is already the source of death. It's either that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala continues the death, or it's either Allah Subhanahu wa Taala causes him to wake up from it. Understand? Which means that when you enter sleep, it's already uh, a form of death. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can cause him to die, continue dying, which means that he won't wake up from his sleep, and therefore he dies. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes him to wake up from his sleep, and therefore you would say, Alhamdulillah, ladi ahyana ba'da ma'a Okay? And the, and if you look at sleep, the, the sleeping person is like the deceased person as well, because his movements are stopped. Okay? And he, he doesn't speak, he's the most movement stopped. His ability to distinguish between things, his ability to think also is gone. His responsibility is also removed from him. Okay? When a person anama an salati aw nasiha fal yusalliha ida dakawa. Whoever sleeps okay, and uh, from a prayer, which means that he he sleep from a prayer because of his sleep, he is not he is not being uh, judged by it or he's not accounted by it. He just needs to wake up and and pray. Okay. Um, and, okay, and, and and the sleep is actually one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which indicates the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself as the as the creator. Okay, and that is why in Ayat al Qursi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions la ta'kuluhu sinakun wa la nun. No sort of drowsiness or sleep overtakes him. To indicate that sleep and drowsiness is from the witnesses uh, or from the are uh, from the witnesses of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the al hayy al ladi la He is the ever living, he does not die. And therefore sleep cannot overtake him, does not befit him, and not even even drowsiness. If drowsiness does not take him, in the first place sleep should not over overtake him. And that is the meaning of La Taqul Sinatu Wa la And that is why in another verse in Surah Al Rum, verse number twenty three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ From his signs, is your sleep during the light, uh, night, مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ and, and the day, وَبْتِغَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِ 
and your seeking of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling us Indeed, those are signs for those who listen. Okay? And not only that, the sleep is also from the uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as well. That's how he mentions this is the source of their rest. Okay? Imagine if there is no sleep for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And therefore, where does the rest come from? Where, is it, where does the source of rest come, come from? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah al qasr verse number 73, من رحمته جعل لكم الليل والنهار لتسكروا في from his mercy Allah created night and day so that you can تسكروا في relax تسكروا في tranquil relaxing تسكروا في ويتبتغوا من فضله so during the night تسكروا في during the day تبتغوا من فضله so during the day you can find sources of bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ولعلكم تسكروا so that you may be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Now, as we mentioned, uh, the sleep is, is um, a representation of, of, of death. Okay? And therefore, another benefit of the sleep is that it should, it should remind the person of, of death. Okay? And it is the end of every human human being or every creation that, that lives. Okay? And when he wakes up, there is a sign of the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect um, bodies okay, after their death. Okay, so there are many signs of life after death. Okay, and this is one of it. Okay, this is one of your own sleep is one of the signs of the truth in resurrection after after death. Some other signs would include for example um, your death before life as well. How Allah mentions in the Quran, "Al-Adha ala al-insan biyun min al-dhari lam yakun shay'an al-kura." You will not anything mentioned. It will not come time to man where he was not, not he was nothing mentioned before. Now you will come a time where you will not be mentioned again. So don't you think that you can be mentioned again after that? Which means that if you are if you did not exist and then suddenly you existed, and you so contemplate upon that fact. Now doesn't it mean that if you cease to exist, if you die? Isn't there a possibility to come back to life? As how you came back to life in the first place? From? From nothing. Did anybody know who my name was? 20 years ago or 30 years ago, for example. Nobody knew. And suddenly I became someone who everybody mentioned. And the problem is, when we become people of mentioning, when people know us, we start to be arrogant, we start to think that we deserve everything, and we can say whatever that we want, but the reality is that all of you, when a person contemplates upon the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he understands that he should be humble and he came from, he came from nothing, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, gave him everything. Okay? Now, um, Al-Nushur, okay, that is why in the dua there is a mentioning of Al-Nushur. What is Al-Nushur? Al-Nushur basically means resurrection. Ba'ath, Yawm al Yawm al Okay? So, um, this basically affirms the resurrection on uh, in the in the Qiyat. And this is why in the Adkar of uh, Al Nahar, Wa ilayka Wa Nushur, in the Adkar of Al Sabah, Wa ilayka Al Masir. Okay, why is there a difference? Okay, Al Masir, basically you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Nushur, basically you will brought back you will be brought back to life in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so when you wake up and you make the adhkar in the morning, you understand that you will end up and end with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should means you go back to sleep, you remind yourself that you will be resurrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at all times, okay, the servant is supposed to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the point of this uh, dhikr over here. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'da ma'amatana. So first of all, uh, Alhamdulillah means praise to Allah. And the meaning of Alhamd is actually, uh, if you look into the translation of the Quran, it always says praise to Allah. But if we trans, uh, if we explain the, the meaning with explanation, okay, it does not only mean praise, it means all praise. Because the, the word Al okay, includes all sorts, of, all sorts of praises. So it's all sorts of praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the meaning of Alhamd, uh, is, is, is praise with love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And love is a very important um, rukun or very important factor in worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you um, 
approach prayer, when you come for prayer, for example, or when you come for any other sorts of ibadah, you recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must approach it with love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that you are about to speak to your Lord, you are about to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what even Kathir mentioned, you have to approach it with love and yearning. 